so back to this uh, this concept here. Uh, you know, look at the uh, the current flow lines for in, that are dashed for the homogeneous subsurface. Look look at the current flow lines for the horizontal interface. Uh, you know, here where the down below is higher resistivity, and you can see that the current lines are shallower in the um, the lower resistivity material and uh, deeper in the higher resistivity material. And so, you know, this leads to uh, uh, modes of data collection and modeling of apparent resistivities that are much like the uh, surface wave uh, phase velocities that we get in REMI analysis and, and that we deal with in REMI modeling. Okay, so we have some kind of geometric uh, factor, and in REMI it's, uh, it's frequency or, uh, or it's inverse uh, um, uh, uh, wave period. Okay, here we might use some sort of uh, electro electrode spacing. Okay, distance in meters as our x-axis, and uh, uh, and then we'll have the apparent, the calculated apparent, the measured apparent resistivity. You know, which is a resistance measured by the four electrode experiment multiplied by some geometric factor that represents the geometry. Okay, and it's ohms in, in ohm meters. Okay, uh, and uh, you know here we have a value at some uh, uh, small distance, and then it gradually rises and uh, maybe even flattens out later at the value uh, at of some higher resistivity. Okay, now when resistivity falls, okay, notice notice that it takes a long time to get to the higher resistivity value and to flatten out there. But when resistivity falls, that short circuiting effect leads it to uh, to fall quickly, right? The slope of this is is greater, uh, and it flattens out at the lower resistivity. The lower resistivity that's down lower, down deeper, flattens out uh, much more quickly. Okay, so this makes it actually easier to get um, uh, the uh, resistivity value of a more conductive uh, medium down below. Uh, conversely, though. Uh, it turns out, uh, you know, with a more conductive medium below, it, it's harder to assess the depth. It's it's so sensitive to uh, to this uh, uh, you know large slope, uh, and the drop is so quick that the uh, the depth of to that lower resistivity uh, uh, for for this kind of experiment is a little harder to measure. All right, so here's a resistivity increase and uh, what the current li lines look like. And they're refracting to be down deeper to the medium than they, than they are than they would be if the medium was all at uh, row one. And then here's those current lines again, uh, where uh, we're getting the short circuiting effect. Row two is uh, less than row one. Okay. Um, and so uh, what we do is we we build up a uh, a survey uh, here. Here's a, a you know prototype winner survey. We got a, a constant A spacing. We got the potential electrodes in the middle. We got the current electrodes on the outside. We've got a uh, interface with a depth Z. Okay, and so uh, we'll get data like this, and maybe you see some of that in um, uh, in the data we have. Although I think mostly you saw decreasing resistivity with with spacing A. Okay, but in this example, the lower medium has ten times the resistivity of the upper medium. You know, row one is ten ohm meters, and row two is one hundred ohm meters. And we take points at different discrete electrode spacings A, and uh, we plot the apparent resistivity uh, rho sub A at each of those uh, each of those spacings. Okay, and then we can connect it with a smooth line and model that, uh, say in the Berger uh, textbook software. Okay. Here the uh, the z is 20 meters, and if you look at 20 meters um, on uh, uh, on on the horizontal scale, notice that that both scales are log log, okay, which is necessary um, because the resistivities you know vary by orders of magnitude uh, much more easily than uh, seismic velocity, uh, for instance, varies uh, by orders of magnitude. So there's 10, there's 20, and you can see that 20 meters, which is the depth, is kind of like right at the beginning 
of where the uh, the, res the apparent resistivities start turning up. Okay, so we could uh, you know take uh, different uh, distances and, and plot those and and uh, you know they should fall along the same curve. Here's an interesting uh, uh, sort of uh, characteristic curve, if you will, uh, where we have um, uh, row one equal to 10 ohmmeters uh, at the uh, uh, near the surface, and then down below we have uh, row two equal to 20 times that 200 ohmmeters, and there are three curves because we're varying the depth of the interface between row one and row two. Okay. And uh, uh, so we have this constant uh, uh, resistivity uh, change. And uh, when we move the depth deeper from 5 meters, say, to 20 meters, that's moving the curve to the right, just like it did in Remy, okay? uh, you know, where it moves, the, uh, the, it moves the, the slope of the curve. Uh, it doesn't change the slope, right? The slope's about the same here. Um, it's the same. Uh, uh, it's approximately the same. It's the same, uh, you know, resistivity contrast. So the slope's the same about. But uh, by moving it to the right means that uh, the interface between the two is at greater depth. Okay. So, you know, it takes a larger e electrode spacing to uh, sense the thing at uh, 20 meters. And really, you got to get it, you know, way out beyond 100 meters. Um, but if the uh, if the depth of the interface is only five meters, then uh, you know by the time you get to a hundred meters, you've got it uh, pretty well characterized. Now here uh, we're going to have some constant uh, 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 depths and thicknesses. Okay, so we'll have a surface layer that is. Uh, this is a very common uh, setup and, and way of looking at uh, electrical data. We have a surface layer that has. Um, a thickness of 10 meters, and then uh, an intermediate layer that's uh, got a thickness of 20 meters, Z2, right? And then we have a half space effectively uh, down below that, and the uh, resistivity of the half space is row three of the intermediate layer, it's row two, and the surface layer is row one. Okay, now. Um, Let's say uh, you know we have um, uh, a twenty meter. Uh, um, uh, you know, let's say uh, Z one was twenty meters. Okay, that's uh, this uh, curve here, and uh, resistivity increases between uh, row one and row two. It increases with depth. Okay, so if row one is ten ohmmeters and row two is twenty ohmmeters, right? There's uh, you know, very little uh, change, and by the time you've gone to, uh, you know, uh, eight times uh, twenty meters or so, you know, you've basically flattened out at uh, the uh, at the twenty uh, uh, ohmmeter uh, 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 resistivity of the lower media. Whereas, um, if the uh, the resistivity below is uh, five hundred meters, you know, fifty times the Row one, I mean, I'm sorry, 500 ohmmeters. Okay, then uh, you'll still cl be climbing. You know, even at a uh, thousand, uh, uh, ten to the third uh, uh, meters of a spacing, a thousand meters of a spacing. You know, which is a lot of wire. Uh, it's still going up and hasn't flattened out yet. All right. So this is a kind of a characteristic curve showing you what happens uh, uh, when you. Uh, when you change, uh, uh, you know one of the properties, and so these gray lines are indicative, right? That's the the value it should go to at much larger distances, you know, twenty ohmmeters, fifty, one hundred, two hundred, and five hundred, you know, which we're not anywhere close to yet. Now take a look at this. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you four characteristic curves. Here's the first two, okay. And uh, we're going back to this model here, all right? Ten meters uh, surface layer, twenty meter thick intermediate layer, and infinitely thick, um, you know, half space down below the bottom layer. Okay. And what's the relationship between you know row one, row two, and row three? 
Well, let's say, uh, as you might expect in a simple situation, simple geology, row one is the, is the smallest, row two is intermediate, and row three is the largest. Okay. So what if that's the, the situation? All right. Then the uh, 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 you get the A type characteristic curve, right? You know, you look at this arm of the A, and with depth, if, if that was a depth versus uh, resistivity plot, right? The uh, the A type uh, it just keeps going up, okay. And uh, here's the characteristic curve uh, for uh, uh, for that kind of uh, that kind of plot. And you can see the depth might be hard to match because uh, you know the, the the slope is shallow. Now on the other hand, let's say row one is is the largest resistivity. Row one is greater than row two, which is also greater than row three. Right? Resistivity is decreasing. Monotonically with depth. Okay, that gives you a Q-type model. Okay, these are called canonical models, right? So A is increasing and Q is decreasing across all three layers, right? And you get this rather rapid fall and it, that it levels out. Okay, so you can you can tell that uh, uh, apart from other kinds of models. Now there's two more canonical models. There's the H. Where the surface and the half space are both greater resistivities than the intermediate layer. Now, the, maybe the intermediate layer is, uh, you know, like we have here in uh, in the Great Basin. It's the tertiary uh, uh, clay playa, which is also rather salty. So that's going to have the lowest resistivity. Row two is going to be lowest, and the others are going to be higher. Okay, so H has a dip in the middle of it. Okay. And kind of the opposite of the H type model is the K type model, okay, and that's where the intermediate layer has the greatest resistivity. Okay, it's greater than row one, and it's also greater than row three. Okay, and that has a hump there instead of a dip. Okay, can you tell the difference between a two-layer model and a three-layer model? All right. Uh, and and if you can collect enough data that you uh, you know here's a resistivity decreasing with depth right so you have uh, diff, uh, two layers uh, you know where the resistivity decreases from ten to the two to ten to uh, ten to the zero uh, ohm meters right so that's a, a two orders of magnitude of uh, a resistivity decrease uh, with depth okay and it decreases at a particular interface so we put that at ten meters and we get this steep curve here at 50 meters depth, it's the middle one. At 20 meters depth, it's the one on the right. Okay, but notice that all those curves have the same maximum slope. Okay, and if you have an intermediate layer, even though it's still, um, you know, a, a Q-type model where resistivity decreases constantly with depth. Okay, you have an intermediate layer. You'll notice that uh, the maximum slope. Is not uh, not as much as the uh, as the other ones. Okay, uh, they achieve a larger maximum slope than does the uh, the three layer three layer model. So that's a that that can be one hint that you have more than one interface in there. Okay, same applies to Revy uh, modeling, by the way. That's a, that's a, all those situations only had uh, resistivity contrasts that were horizontal. Okay. Now let's examine some uh, ways that, that we'd like to use resistivity to uh, uh, try to see uh, vertical interfaces, you know, or at least non-horizontal interfaces. So here's a, a cross-section now where we have, uh, on the left-hand side, we have row 1. And on the right-hand side, we have row 2. And we do a little uh, uh, winner array. And uh, maybe maybe we do winter profiling instead of winter winter sounding. You know, we can take a winter array. You didn't do this in the field uh, this year, but we can take a winter array and, and uh, we can keep a constant a spacing, and center that array at different distances, you know, along the along the top of the section. So here, the um, it's at a distance x from the um, the center of the array is at a distance x. From uh, the interface between uh, the vertical interface between row one and row two, maybe that's a vertically dipping fault. Okay, so here's here's what you would get as the apparent resistivity 
um, uh, you know, between the uh, um, the 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 apparent resistivity versus the uh, the the location, the distance of the uh, of the um, uh, the distance of the center of the winner array, okay, uh, from the uh, vertical contact, okay. Now notice this goes from minus five meters, you know, through zero meters, where you know where the array is centered exactly over the the uh, the, the vertical contact, okay, and five meters to the right. The a spacing here is one meter, okay. So um, you know, suddenly when we get to one um, uh, current electrode over the uh, um, uh, one current electrode on the other side of the of the of the contact, there's a piecewise discontinuity, and then a meter later there's another piecewise discontinuity. A meter later there's another piecewise discontinuity, and so forth. Okay, so um, and, and you can see when we're uh, you know off on the entirely on the right hand side, you know, and nowhere near the uh, the more resistive uh, material on the on the on the left, right. So, so uh, you know, here's more resistive material. Here's less resistive material. Row two, you know, row two is ten ohmmeters, and on the left, row one is it is a hundred ohmmeters. Okay, so uh, ten times less resistive on the on the right. Okay, um, so uh, it's all pretty much going to give us the uh, you know the whole space value or the half space value of uh, ten ohmmeters. And as long as we're way over on the right-hand side and, and are not getting short-circuited by the less resistive stuff on the on the on the right, we're way over on the left-hand side. Okay, uh, we get that hundred ohmmeters of the material on the left-hand side. In between, you know, as as each electrode crosses over, there's a piecewise discontinuity here, um, and uh, that's uh, you know that could make for quite a weird profile. Okay. Here's another one where we start, uh, say, in the row one material, and we keep the center at, uh, at at some negative x, and we start to expand the winner array. So this would be a sounding where we happened, as as we you know might have done in our field work, we happen to uh, you know have electrodes uh, uh, starting to cross over the the uh, the vertically oriented contact uh, as we expanded the uh, uh, the width of the array as we expanded a. Okay, so look at this. Uh, you know, uh, over here we're at minus two meters. At uh, one meter, we um, these are apparent resistivities again. At one meter, we we uh, have crossed over to the other side of the fault, and the uh, apparent resistivity drops rapidly. Uh, and then as we keep uh, expanding, uh, the apparent resistivity is going to go up and then down. Crazy, huh? Uh, you know, after the uh, the the it'll go down again after the the uh, the potential electrode crosses onto the other side of the fault. Okay, so uh, 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 these kinds of profiles, you know, this profile doesn't necessarily mean that we have you know one, two, three, four different resistivities. You know, a four layer model. Uh, it just means that we're crossing over a a lateral interface in resistivity. Now here's you know two lateral interfaces maybe with a low resistivity fault zone or a high resistivity mineralized dike right um, so we have still the center of the fault zone say is uh, distance x from the center of the array okay and uh, we can uh, move that array around and do uh, profiling all right and as we cross different uh, uh, sensor different uh, electrodes onto the other side of the fault there, there are these discontinuities you know and when we're right over the fault we got that lower lowest resistivity and then as we get far away enough from the fault you know it, it's leveled out at uh, high values uh, it's leveled out the re at the value of the resistance of the country rock uh, having nothing to do with the fault or resistivity of the country rock you know what if we go over a uh, you know a uh, a uh, less resistive spot, you know, it's it's a, a tight little uh, channel or something that has uh, uh, less resistive mud in it as opposed to sand, uh, which is giving us a higher resistivity row one. 
Okay, or uh, uh, what if we come to the edge of a of a basin and there's a dip of a basin floor? Okay, what's going to happen? Okay, uh, we if we're lucky and we play our cards right and we understand what's going on, we might even be able to get a uh, a rough idea of the uh, the dip of the of the basin floor. All right. So here's uh, let's see. Uh, here's profiling over that. Uh, uh, over that uh, uh, edge of the basin there, and you can see that if the 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 dip is shallow, okay, we start to see that higher resistivity material, you know, much sooner as we as we're you know moving our our profiling experiment, our profiling array closer and closer to the edge of the basin, you know. Whereas uh, if the dip is ninety degrees, this is that other that first case I showed you, where uh, you know, you just don't see it uh, for a while uh, until you're pretty much right, out, right, right at it. Okay. Now in the field, what do we do? Okay, we have a, uh, uh, and here's our our mini res uh, box. It's got uh, a power source, uh, which you know is a, a voltage regulator, basically connected to the uh, an active voltage regulator, right? It's capable of boosting the the few volts it gets out of the four D batteries uh, up to hundreds of volts, uh, and it uh, makes a very good measurement of the uh, uh, of the current. Um, it's an ammeter, uh, makes a very good uh, uh, measurement of the current that's uh, um, that's uh, um, that's connecting the uh, uh, that's going through the current electrodes and that's going through the ground. And then it has a very sensitive voltmeter, you know, where the voltmeter doesn't require much current. It's got a very high impedance, especially at the low frequencies we're using at, at DC, very high impedance. And it, it doesn't suck very much current out of the ground and just is able to probe the voltage across the potential electrodes. All right. And uh, so basically it's a $5,000 uh, 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 voltmeter is, is, that's really what it, what it really is, okay, and um, and we get out a, a direct reading in ohms, okay, uh, you know, just uh, V over uh, I. Very simple, and uh, there it is. You know, you 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 know that the uh, um, the potential electrodes are on the left, and the current electrodes are on the right, um, and both uh, are in the same box. Uh, we can look at uh, you know, we looked at the uh, the winter array, all right, <clears throat> and there's other arrays that uh, we could do. Okay, here's uh, Schlumberger, and uh, you know where uh, uh, the distance between the uh, the 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 arrays. Uh, I'm sorry, the distance between the potential electrodes is much less than L. The larger distance between the current electrodes, two L. Okay. We can do dipole-dipole work. We just need uh, wire. Okay. Um, we could even do uh, you know pole-pole work if we wanted to, and we get uh, we we plot apparent resistivities versus uh, electrode spacing. Uh, these might be the three readings you got for the for the uh, the winter array, and uh, also for Schlumberger arrays, you can uh, vary the. Uh, uh, you, you also the distance between the uh, potential electrodes you could vary. Uh, even though it's plotted against uh, just the um, uh, not A, but uh, uh, for for Schlumberger, but the electrodes uh, the dis A B over two, the half the distance between the uh, the two current electrodes for Schlumberger. Okay, so we get this kind of uh, of curve, and we might first wonder, all right, you know, what's the depth of this first interface uh, that goes from this lower apparent resistivity to this higher resistivity? Okay. And so, if we put that, uh, uh, we make the uh, the first resistivity, uh, the the shallowest resistivity. Um, you know, we'll have uh, the apparent resistivity over the over the 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 first resistivity be uh, one. Okay, so we'll lay the curve down on there, and then um, <coughs> we'll um, uh, we'll basically. Uh, 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 Say all right, how steep does that go up? You know, maybe it didn't. Uh, it goes up pretty steeply. All right, so uh, we're going to try to match it with uh, a um, 
uh, a factor of, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, basically uh, 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 almost ten times the uh, uh, the resistivity in the uh, uh, in the lower material. Okay, and uh, then if we can plot it such that uh, you know the a spacing divided by the depth falls along this line and the points fall along the characteristic curve, then uh, uh, you know just from the characteristic curve itself we can derive the uh, uh, the depth. Okay, and notice the the increased sharpnesses of the curve where it goes down. Okay, you know to one tenth of the resistivity, and uh, and that is, uh, uh, you know, that's how modeling at least a, a two resistivity uh, 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 cross section can uh, can proceed, uh, just by matching curves. Okay, so you you know just try to plot it, and and what curve does that match? Okay, well it matches this one, uh, where we've got uh, where we're at the a spacing of uh, of ten meters, and uh, where we're uh, you know on this log log scale. You know we're um, log uh, minus 0.4 down in resistivity. All right, here's a, an example of uh, of a uh, constant uh, winter array, right? So with a constant a spacing, uh, going over some some different geological boundaries. Okay, and uh, right at the center of uh, these big changes in uh, in apparent resistivity, we've got uh, uh, these big gradients. Okay. And that's where the uh, right in the center of those big gradients. That's where the um, that's where the interfaces are. Okay, and uh, you know we have a uh, a shear zone with a different resistivity profile. It's kind of causing this anomaly and helping us to find that uh, that shear zone. All right, um, you know in in your um, in modeling the measurements that you took. Okay. I mean, one bad point for whatever reason can uh, can throw a lot of bias in. Okay, make you uh, you know make you try to uh, to match it, and if you remove that point, you know you might get a much better uh, resistivity. If you remove too many points, you're removing too much data. All right, uh, you know maybe that's the that's the value here that it should have had, but it had a value down there, and so that made it uh, more difficult. Okay, so that's the end of uh, these lectures on uh, on res resistivity, and uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll go ahead and and uh, uh, talk next week about uh, uh, electromagnetic methods, and I'll introduce you to skin depth, which is really one of the first things that we'll uh, uh, we'll look at there. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, uh, the a spacing of uh, of the uh, um, of the resistivity world.